Hi, I'm Gina Beck. I am the Senior Tech Business Development Manager for Amazon at AlexisMart Properties, supporting senior living. I am here today with Matt Smith, the CEO and co-founder of speak to family He's actually been one of um, our pioneering solution providers who started with AlexisMart Properties uh, about five years ago. Um, and it's, it'll be really interesting. Um, this fireside chat is really going to be focusing on not only things around senior living, but also around the importance of voice. Uh, Matt, welcome. Thanks for having me, Gina. So I'm just going to get right to it. Um, one of the things that a lot of folks think is that voice in general is something that's kind of cool and almost like what I would say the new toy that everyone wants. Um, but oftentimes folks don't really think about the importance or the true value of voice. If you could, Matt, explain to the, our audience, what would you say is the number one reason voice is important to older adults? Yeah, so uh, that's a great question and point, Gina. Voice is such an important technology because it's an accessible user interface. So a lot of times we engage with residents and they have an app or they have a phone or someone gave them an iPad and it kind of just sits there unused because there's a lot of intimidation for people who are aging to tap and swipe, whether it be just tactile issues or visual issues or impairments. Um, it's hard for people who are aging to engage with things that are on a screen. So the perfect thing about voice is they're already doing that. They can do it. There's not a lot of the learning curve on it. Um, seniors can embrace voice as a user interface, and it makes the barrier to getting into technology, to getting content, to connecting with people, all the things that we do all day with our phones, uh, voice makes that accessible to the residents in senior living communities. Isn't that why, Matt, you actually decided to create Speak to Family because of that exact common problem where tablets are not that accessible for older adults? Exactly. So it started, you know, with my mom. So many people in senior living have their personal story. But it did start with my mom who had macular degeneration, really couldn't see much. We were all texting on phones and she was just out of the loop. Um, I'd been doing some consulting in hospitals and we kept rolling out tablets to everybody. It was the new thing and tablets have a nice big screen, but it just wasn't resonating. And it didn't really matter what you did with the user interface. Um, it wasn't just visual, it was also the tactile issues. It was also the newness uh, and the intimidation factor of even turning on a tablet, pressing the buttons, pressing the button on top or the home button, opening the app. All of that was just a barrier. So. The whole reason we got into this business was because of the voice interface. Sure, there are a lot of great features out there, but if you can't access them, it's kind of like, what's the point? So uh, the Alexa program and the Alexa Smart Properties group are what inspired us to get into this business to begin with. That's great. Uh, you, you spoke about things, um, particularly around engaging with family. And I know that's obviously the name of your company, Speak to Family. With that being said, and, and I think this, the data is that social isolation is actually a bigger predictor of longevity. So the more isolated they are, the more, le the more likely that um, they're going to pass away versus those who are not socially engaged. How do you think having voice being that connection piece, what are you seeing around increasing social engagement um, with yeah. your station? That's a great point. And, and just to highlight one of the points you made before I uh, go on a little bit more is, it's not just you know when they pass away because of the isolation, but the quality of life and the quality of wellness while they are engaged, right, or, or, or during that time. Um, so, so the whole point around loneliness is uh, if you can't connect with people, you're going to get lonely, right? I mean, that's not rocket science. I think everybody in the field knows that. Um, the, the vulnerability of, of someone to take on not only connecting with people that they maybe aren't familiar with within a community or connecting with their neighbors, um, that's compounded if the technology in which you're doing that is also intimidating. So it's intimidating enough to, to, to get out there and do things. Uh, it's, it's even more intimidating if you can't access and you're constantly feeling vulnerable that 
I don't even know if I can do this. So what voice does is it overcomes all of that. What we do is we start by training people that, hey, just have a conversation, keep it really simple. And we always start with things just like music, news, weather, reminders, things that give a resident pleasure, things that are things they want to consume. You can do that with an Alexa, which breaks the barrier of, I don't know if I can do this. Because you're not introducing new technology to them, you're introducing what we call a clock radio that you can talk to. So they get that metaphor, they say, oh sure, I can set a reminder, I can set an alarm, oh, I can play music this way. Their eyes light up and they say, you know what, this is fantastic, I can do this. That's great. Uh, I've been obsessed with a word called inclusive innovation, which is really what you have been describing, is that innovation, when it includes everybody, and I do feel that older adults have been left behind in a lot of the technology that has been engaging. And so what you're describing is that you've opened doors with older adults who have been challenged um, and really having difficulty to use technology which is really amazing. Um, I do want to, before I jump off talking about residents, a couple things I want to talk about with older adults. I, I am going to shift the conversation to workflows and staff and associates. Um, but to wrap up resident engagement in general, one of the things I've heard is that, you know, again, technology is, is only as good as if it's getting used. And um, it could be, if, if it doesn't get touched, then there's no engagement at all. And there's a lot of platforms that exist um, that I don't think is getting a lot of the engagement that folks need. Um, and even, even nurse call systems, for example, um, you know, even though these are required by law in most buildings to have this way of calling the nurse or having a pendant that they push, but oftentimes they are either not close to the nurse call or they don't have access or they forgot to wear their pendant. How does voice become a, a way to augment and make when they need help to get it the right time? Do you have examples that this has happened? Absolutely. So uh, it, it is incredible engagement, you know, to your point about engagement platforms and, and keeping people engaged. If you can't use the technology who are you engaging, right? So apps and, and tablets and, and websites just not going to engage a certain population. Um, to your point about dependence, you know, it's a stigma sometimes. They don't want to wear it around their neck or they just forgot it. Um, the, the whole point around using voice as a way to get help and to, to get noticed or to get content um, or to share information, again, it becomes an ambient part of their day. It's not uh, it's not an external aspect of what they do. It's there in their their apartment, just like the TV is, just like the phone is. Um, most of the residents we encounter have either a very large flip phone or, or a landline. And now all of a sudden they can make a phone call just by saying, Alexa, call Matt. Um, so it becomes part of how they operate. It's how they, when they wake up and they say, Alexa, start my day to get their routine going. When you build it into the flow of the day, whether it be for a resident or for staff, you don't then have to convince people of, hey, this is where you get help. This, let, me, let me show you how to press this pen in, or don't forget to take your pen in. They are used to speaking with Alexa. It's, it's, it's a common interaction that they have, and you don't have to worry about, gee, will they open the app and use it? They're using it for all sorts of things all day. Um, and you've just layered on these accessibility aspects. And it is extremely inclusive because, um, like we said, if, if they can use it to get music or to set an alarm, they can also use it to get help. Uh, and it's, it's, we have so many use cases. We had someone recently uh, in the Nashville area fell, um, was laying in the bathroom at about 4 a.m., uh, didn't have a pendant with her, and she called out to Alexa. Alexa called her daughter. Her daughter got help, and everything worked out fine. Um, otherwise, she's going to be laying there for four or five hours, uh, and maybe even longer, because nobody knows. And if they're not doing check-ins in that community, um, they're, they're not going to find out. So Alexa allows for this mechanism of safety that, you know, it's not an emergency pull cord or pendant, um, but it can get people help when they need it anywhere in the room uh, just by saying, Alexa, call whoever it is that they want to call. One of the things I've noticed beyond the fact that we're trying to get older adults engaged is trying to get the workflows and the staff and associates 
engaged. And interesting enough, I don't think a lot of folks understand that um, a lot of the folks serving older adults happen to be older as well. Mm -hmm. And they sometimes project their fears around technology. But on top of it, like anyone else, they've got to go and do documentation. They've got to go in front of a terminal. And if you've ever experienced an associate, whether they're at a CNA or they're running, you know, the head of the business or they're the chief nurse or however way you, you watch them, they don't sit down in front of a terminal for too long. They don't have the time. And now with the workforce shortage, which we are now calling the staffing apocalypse, we're starting to see that not only is there no time, there's not enough workers. How does hands-free workflows work in the way that you engage some of your customer base, the associates? How does this hands-free workflow change the way they're doing their business, their work in general? Yeah, it's a fantastic um, topic. We learned over the last year or so that the staff is more so of our customer than uh, than the residents. So we're really gratified. We get residents connecting, consuming content, messaging. It, it, it is. It was our first goal was to get residents more connected and engaged. Uh, the bias that that people not only have on their own technology is also a bias that they project onto others, like you said. Uh, and there's a big bias that my residents won't do this, right? Um, guess what? The staff doesn't want to do it either. Meaning, go back to a computer, type things in. They're walking around. They're frantic. They're usually short-staffed. They're helping people all day. They're tired. To get someone to go back to a computer and enter data about I set up a puzzle today with Mr. Smith for 20 minutes, or you know, I visited these six rooms. If it's not going back into an EHR, more than likely all of that data is lost. Hands-free completely empowers staff to enter data, to, to share information during the flow of their day. So now instead of having to type into an app or go back to a computer later on when they've probably either forgotten or like you said, just don't have time to do it, they can actually do all this as part of the flow of their day just using Alexa. So we have a skill called Notepad, and they can just say, Alexa, tell my Notepad I'm playing chess with Matt. Or Alexa, tell my Notepad that I'm visiting Gina. And it logs all of that. It lets the community know all of the activity that staff have. Um, it lets them report on it. It lets them bill on it, whatever it might be for that community. But the, the beautiful part of it is that it empowers staff. You have now taken staff that are frustrated with the lack of tools. They are frustrated with the uh, lack of support that they sometimes get, not because operators aren't trying to supply support, but because the technology didn't lend itself to the flow of the day that the staff was experiencing. Now, all of a sudden, you have this technology that they can speak to, and the devices are spread around, the whether they're common areas or hallways or in resident rooms, and they can, in a secure way, log information that was previously not capable of being logged or get content about a resident that they couldn't get before, that is so empowering to staff. It makes them feel more supported. It makes them feel like they're working in a modern workplace that has modern tools. Um, it's, it's transformational. And what we learned, and we just did a case study on this, is that um, it, it not only creates better staff retention, but it also attracts staff and it saves time. There's efficiencies. We have a customer that gained an efficiency of one staff member per shift was freed up to do other things because of the accessibility of residents engaging via voice, but also staff engaging via voice. So it's transformative. It's unfortunate that most people look at Alexa as that consumer device, like, hey, I have Alexa in my kitchen and I play music and I get recipes. Um, Alexa is a is a business tool. And when it's used in this way, it can transform not only the residents' lives, but the staff lives and get much better data for reporting. Um, I do think that Alexa is almost in that place where cell phones or smartphones were in the 2007, 2008 timeframe when everybody got an iPhone and they were all playing Angry Birds. And then suddenly it was, hey, I should be using this for work too. Um, I feel like Alexa is just crossing that chasm now where people are starting to get it. I need to use this as a business tool. That's great. You know, in this time of 
our economy where inflation is is increasing, interest rates are rising, uh, occupancy numbers, although getting, I, I read that is improving, but the number that you need to reach is higher than it was pre-pandemic. With all of that, how do you convince an operator that this is something that they need to do now, that they need to incorporate voice into their property today and not wait one month, two months, three months, a year. What is the urgency? Why do they need to do this today? Yeah, it's a great point. Um, I think we're seeing less complacency around it now that there are so many use cases and case studies and the value is becoming more obvious uh, so things are, are improving in that in that acceleration of adoption. Um, but but why do it today? I mean, do you want to wait another year or two before you have technology that empowers your staff, increases efficiency, gets you better data that um, sets you up to attract that next generation, the baby boomers that are coming in? They are not going to accept, you know, the, the, the lack of tools and the lack of interaction and the lack of accessibility to content that maybe a generation prior to that would accept. Um, and they are moving in now. So it kind of hits on all aspects of a business. Um, you need to improve efficiency. You need to get your staff more empowered to retain them and attract staff. You need to attract more residents with more modern tools. Um, it, it's, it's all of the above. And uh, for those that have adopted sooner rather than later, they're already seeing the benefits. So they are already at an advantage. So what we try to say to our, our prospective customers is, if you wait a little bit longer, you're gonna be left behind because people are using this tool set not only to, it's not just an engagement thing in the room. It's not just, hey, I wanna play music in the room. It's a nice, nice to have. This is transformative. And what the companies that have adopted earlier are, are doing is, they are actually coming up with new services that are now accessible by voice. They're actually working beyond the walls of their building to reach more people because they can now do that because they have technology that enables them to do that. So, you know, waiting six months is the equivalent of waiting two years because by the time you catch up to all that acceleration that others are having, you're at a real serious competitive disadvantage. If you don't believe me, a vendor, or, or you know, someone who's in the industry that I'm in, just go talk to other vendors who have actually done this and they'll tell you the impact directly, uh, which is great for us because we don't have to make that value proposition. They can just talk to people who are doing it and see it for themselves. I do believe that this view on voice, though, really does differentiate communities where they start to become what I believe the 21st century community. Smart home is, is a component of uh, voice, and particularly around even fall mitigation. Um, can you articulate a little bit of how voice and smart home kind of play together? And, um, and is there a connection to preventing or even mitigating falls and, and other things that might happen that will hurt an older adult? Uh, related to safety and, and falls and things like that, um, there are so many things that can be done uh, related to smart home that are so easy to do that can be really transformative. I mean, the most simple thing in the world is the ability to control lights and the environment with your voice um, and have some routines around that based on behavior. Um, you know, falls happen because the lights are off and I tried to get up and I didn't remember that I left the blanket at my feet. Or, um, you know, I'm, I'm going into the bathroom and I have to reach over for the light and I either fall getting the light or I walk to the bathroom in the dark and, you know, then turn on the light. Routines, you know, it gets dark, I fell asleep in my chair and all the lights are off because when I fell asleep, it was light out. Having a routine that the lights come on before I even wake up um, before dinner or, or, you know, shortly after dinner, big safety feature. All of these things are incredible technologies that are extremely accessible and extremely affordable. There are, uh, is, of course, other layers of fall prevention technology that are you know, far beyond that, you know, radar and things like that, that are still evolving that can integrate into all these systems. But if you're just talking about, let's just make the environment safer and let's prevent falls. Um, there's, there's almost, you know, I hate to put it in this negative term, but there's almost no excuse not to. Mm -hmm. It's so affordable and so easy to do. Uh, it's kind of astonishing that everyone isn't just doing it right now. Yeah. 
So I'm going to end with a couple questions. One is going to be around security and privacy. And my last question is actually going to be about um, speaks to secret sauce, although you may not want to reveal, but we'll talk about that as, to wrap everything up. But I would be remiss if I didn't talk about security and privacy, because I will say older adults and actually probably everyone are always worried that Amazon is listening to them, particularly Alexa. Yeah. How can you put to rest to everyone um, on in listening to this that uh, Amazon and Alexa is not listening to them and that it's a private and secure engagement? Yeah, um, we face it head on. We introduce it. So even if someone doesn't ask, we bring it up because we know someone's going to ask if they haven't thought of asking in that moment. Um, Amazon has done an incredible thing to create Alexa smart properties and create a secure platform for this technology. We connect to that platform in a secure way and then we have a HIPAA compliant cloud. So uh, end to end, it's as secure as any system is going to be. And the, the privacy of the resident and of staff and of the community in general is first and foremost, the first thing we have to do when we engage. And that's why we address it head on. We share Amazon's documentation that you guys have about smart properties and how you guys do it. We share our own documentation. And then we are just very upfront about here's what exactly happens. Here's how it's handled. And again, talk to other communities, talk to other people who've adopted this, talk to Amazon's architects. Um, we, we, we make it a very strong point to share this upfront because people are worried about it. You know, there might be stories they've read in the news about something that's happened. So we share everything up front and we address it head on and we let people look under the covers. They can look under the covers of our platform. I know Amazon is very open about sharing things about what they do. Um, and nine times out of 10, people say, okay, I get it, now let me try. And then, you know, 10 times out of 10, they say, this was very much worth it. No, yeah, that's great. Um, so when we talk about your secret sauce, I'm going to kind of say what I think it is, and then you're going to tell me yes or add to what I'm going to say. Mm -hmm. So one of the things that I think that gets challenging around this space, particularly on technology deployments with older adults, is that properties and senior living providers are afraid that if we go and deploy technology that people will just drop it there and then never support it. Mm -hmm. um, I believe speak to does a really good job of making sure that people are not only adopting and engaging, but also they maintain and support it going forward from a customer service perspective. And I think I, that is your secret sauce that has caught a lot of residents and senior living providers very happy with your service. Mm -hmm. Am I wrong or, or is there more? No, you're, you're right. I mean, I think the reason people in senior living feel the way that they do is because that's their experience, right? Is here's your app and there's the website to go learn how to use it. Go check it out. We're in people's homes, right? So uh, that approach, that B2B approach that a lot of people take with their technology, it just doesn't apply to senior living because not only are we in the residents' homes, but the staff that are working there, they're also in the residents' homes. And to some extent, these become their second home as well. So that is our secret sauce. We uh, engage, uh, we look at ourselves as much of maybe a consulting company, if you'd want to call it that, or a delivery company. I don't know what the right term is, but we feel that it's more important that we actually engage, stay engaged, and stay supporting and continuously engaging with our customers just as much as we need to have a great product. So, you know, the, the philosophy most companies have is I'm going to build a great product and you shouldn't need that much support because it's a great product. Um, we want to build a great product. We think we have a great product, but without that support in this industry, it's not a great product. It's only half of a product. So the other half of our product is staying engaged, whether it be weekly or biweekly calls with, with uh, communities to find out how they're doing, who's using what, what do they see valuable, how can we help more. Doing one-on-one -on -one calls with families to show them what they can do with this. We will get on the phone with one family and spend 15 minutes, a half an hour with them to show them how this can all work for them. They can download our app and connect with the Alexa and do video calls and all that. They might not know how to do that, so we can't just send them a document. They need to be treated like people. And 
I guess I would abstract it out. So, so the hard reason is what you defined, but I abstract it out to be, it's really more of a philosophy and an approach. Um, this is somewhat of a mission that we're on and we truly want to help people and we want to make a difference in their lives. And the only way to do that is to actually care enough to stay engaged. And if that means that, you know, uh, we spend a little extra time on the phone with people or we take some of the, the revenue that we get and we apply it to more customer service, so be it. That's what we're going to do because otherwise uh, there's really no point in doing any of this. I will have to say that what that sounds like is high tech, high touch. Um, and I actually think your name is very befitting of what you do because speak, obviously, the voice to family, which you're actually ensuring that family connection is happening. Mm -hmm. um, and as we just started the whole thing about um, socialization is the biggest predictor of longevity. Um, it sounds like speak to is not only ensuring that, but also really engaging and improving the quality of life of their older adults that they serve. Is there anything else that you'd like to say to wrap up our little fireside chat? I think you uh, said it best for me, and I appreciate you acknowledging that and recognizing it. Uh, we've, we feel fortunate to be in this ecosystem, to be working with Alexa Smart Properties, and we feel like we're taking what you guys have done, which is amazing, and taking it to market and making it accessible and delivering it. So if anybody else wants to get on board with this with us, we're all for it, and we want to work with you, and we want to make this happen and change people's lives for the better. We're just really appreciative of the opportunity to talk to people and make this happen. Thank you for making such a huge difference and being such a quality solution provider representing Alexa Smart Properties. Thank you, Gina.